step forward for understanding how the moon was formed, understanding how our solar system was formed. And notably, this site that they chose to land was much younger than the Apollo landing sites, which means that we get a better understanding of the differences that the lunar and surface environment went through throughout its history. And that will help us date not only the moon, but also other solar system bodies out there so we can better understand how our entire solar system was formed and how planets formed more generally. Uh, Laura, another expert I spoke to yesterday said the moon samples, of course, they are a very big deal. But I thought it was in interesting that he said he was more impressed by how many things had to go right in terms of technology for this mission to be successful. Do you agree? I, I definitely agree. This was a, an important step forward for Chinese technology, the space progress. And, and as we saw earlier in the year, the first Chinese mission to Mars, which is not a sample return mission, but still a very important step. Se we're seeing a lot of missions going right. And a lot of things had to happen very quickly with this lunar mission. So this lunar mission just took a very, very short time compared to other missions. You know, we've got um, missions to asteroids that are ongoing as well. Um, both NASA and JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency have asteroid missions that take years. And if there will be a future Mars re return mission, that will also take years. So this was a very rapid lunar sample return mission that was impressive, that it, it, it seemed to go without a hitch. Uh, China has said it's going to share the um, samples with scientists around the world. Uh, how does that work exactly, Laura? Sometimes there are prearranged agreements, and sometimes there are agreements that happen after the fact based on what China sees within these samples. So there might be a plethora of um, great scientific diversity within these samples, or there might be limited, and therefore they have to sort of keep it close to home. We don't know yet because they haven't announced those details. And it also, there might be some kind of proposal system set up where they might decide which samples to send where based on scientific merit. But one thing is for sure is that China has, China has a great opportunity here to engage scientists from around the world. And this might even include the United States. Right now, the United States is prohibited from directly working with China based on a, an amendment in a law. However, it could be a roundabout way um, through a third party that the United States could also work with China with these samples. We're just going to have to see. Interesting. And another fascinating aspect of this mission is the spacecraft. I want to just read my notes. I don't want to get this wrong. The spacecraft that brought the return module back to Earth still has power. How unusual is that? And that, can that um, spacecraft be used for another mission? Yeah, this is actually fairly common with spacecraft. We, we don't want to limit the objectives that a spacecraft can achieve. So there's the primary mission, which China just did spectacularly. And then there might be secondary missions that now they can go ahead and look to see what the requirements are for those missions and what limitations there might be within the spacecraft and decide which targets they want to pursue and which scientific objectives they want to go for next. And it will be up to the Chinese scientists and managers to decide um, what is realistic for the next phase of this mission. It will be very exciting to see what they can do next. Exciting times indeed.